Hi everybody. Today we're going to look at empirical research articles. As students of engineering, you're going to be reading a lot of empirical research articles. So it's important to know how to read them easily and efficiently. Let's take a look. First of all, we have to ask ourselves, what is empirical research? Well, basically, empirical research is based on evidence. And what it comes from is looking at things directly, direct observations or experiments or other kinds of interventions. Um, it could be a survey, it could be a case study. And basically, they're all published in academic journals. Why? Because the purpose of empirical research, research is to share, to share the information, to report on empirical research in an article with the scientific community. We want to share what we've learned. Empirical research, research articles also follow a very, very specific fixed format or structure. And basically, it follows the steps that the researcher took in conducting the research. What did he do? It tells the story. And it begins with what prompted the researcher to look into this issue? What was that real world issue that motivated him or her? And then what did they do to examine it? And what were their results? And what were their conclusions? So it basically, in many ways, is a narrative. It tells a story. And it's an interesting story because if we look at it, this story follows a specific shape. It follows the hourglass shape, here and here. So if we look at the wide parts, the wide parts at this top are all analogous to the real world. They relate to the world, real world. So it's the top and it's the bottom. And in the middle is that experiment or intervention. Let's take a closer look. So if we look here and we see that there are four main parts of the research article, the introduction, the methods, the results, and the discussion. The introduction, which deals with a problem or a question in the literature, the previous research. And then the discussion, which are the conclusions and the implications. These relate to the real world, the introduction and the conclusion. And the methods and the results, that's the experiment, and that's here. So again, we see our hourglass shape. So now let's take a closer look at the various elements or components of the empirical research article. So if we start first with our five, four, excuse me, four main parts, the introduction, the method, the results, the discussion, and conclusion. Yeah, that's five. Or conclusion, discussion and we look at the additional parts, those parts that are a little bit out. Let's take a look. We've got our title, the name of the journal, the date of publication, the name of the authors, the abstract, and the references. And now we're going to take a closer look at each of these elements. We're going to start with the title. That's always a good place to start. And if we look at the title of a research article, it always has two parts and it's divided by a colon, or nikudatai. It starts with, let's say, X, and this gives us the topic of the research. And then Y, which gives us either a research question or the purpose of the research. And what we're looking for is the relationship between the two, the topic and then the more specific, either the research question or the purpose. Let's take a look at some examples. Again, we're looking for our topic, and we're looking for a purpose or research question. First title, College Experiences and Sex Role Attitudes. That's our topic. Does a woman's college make a difference? So what have we got? We've got a question, a question here. That's a simplified research question. Women's colleges and co-ed colleges. Co-ed is men and women together, like groups. Our topic, and then again we have a question. Is there a difference for women? So we have a research question. The culture of gender. 
our topic, men and women of color. So we're going to relate to not just the culture of gender, but also the color of the men and women. Next one, men, women, and war. We have a topic, these three, men, women, and war. Gender differences in, men, in attitudes towards war. So we're going to see the relationship between these three elements. Okay, next we're going to look at the author's names, and these always appear under the title. Um, the order of the authors depends on the order that the authors themselves decided on. And the first name is usually the main contributor or the senior writer, um, and it's decided uh, by them. And sometimes underneath that we have a little bit about the author's affiliation or where the author comes from. And today more and more international research goes on, so we may have a uh, author from Rupin in Tel Aviv, in Israel, and an author in Boston at Harvard University. Ah, uh, the wonders of internet. Another point that we have to look at is the date of publication. So if we see here in this article, it was published in 2003. So we have to stop and ask ourselves, is this still relevant today in 2014? So if we look at changes and collision rates among novice, beginner, drivers during the first months of driving. So we have to ask ourselves, are drivers of 2003 and 2014, are they all that different? And we may decide that beginner drivers are beginner drivers and an issue of 10 years may not be all that important and decide that we can go on. Perhaps it may be a different topic, um, nanotechnology, for example where it may be very, very significant. The other thing that we often have, and it's sometimes very confusing, we'll see a bunch of other dates. Uh, received November 2000, received in revised form March 2003, accepted 2003, and it just shows some earlier dates that the article was submitted to the journal. The one that we're interested in is the one that appears in the reference, 2003. The abstract. The abstract basically is our friend. It summarizes the key points or components of the article. And it's very important to read the abstract and make sure that you understand it. It's worth taking the time, making the effort. It's short. It's one paragraph. I know it's sometimes difficult, but it's worth making your way through it because it gives you that summary of the whole article in one paragraph. Okay, now if we get to the main part of the article, we have our introduction. Um, the word introduction may not appear in the text, but it's always the first section of the first section of the article that comes after the abstract. And within the introduction, we have a lot of different information. It may not appear, appear exactly in this order, but it usually appears. Let's take a closer look. Uh, it's going to give us the background of the article. In other words, what prompted the authors to do this research? Um, it may pose a theater, theoretical question or problem. And again, it always relates to the real world. It often has a review of literature, which is the previous research. What research has been done? Where is the gap in research that this study is going to fill. And that basically is our rationale. Why are you doing this? It's because we don't know something. It may have a theoretical framework or a scientific um, paradigm that it's going to work from. It will usually mention the purpose or the aim of the study and include the research questions and the hypotheses. So these are the things that we want to look for and pay attention to while we're reading the introduction. I want to talk a little bit about the hypotheses and basically this is um, a possible or tentative answer to the research question and it's basically confirmed or refuted. It's either proved or not proved. Uh, they often appear at the end of the introduction. They don't always appear as the hypotheses are but we have a special language of hypotheses such as we expect or we anticipate 
Sometimes we hypothesize, we predict, or should be. This, these are clues. They are language clues that show us that we're talking about the hypotheses, and we need to pay attention to them. If you see them, highlight. The other thing we look at is the method or the research design. Um, how did the uh, authors do their research? Who was who were their subjects? What was the sample midgam? What were the conditions or the setting of the research? How did they collect data? How are they going to measure or analyze that data? And what exactly did, did they do? We did first this, then this, then this, then this. This is key information and it's important to understand uh, in general uh, what was done in the method. The next we have our results, and these are the findings of the study, and they often have lots of numer numerical statistical data that's presented in figures and diagrams and tables, graphs, as well as a description of the findings in writing, in prose, kind of a story. Um, it's often easier to understand the numerical or statistical data by looking at the diagrams or tables because it's graphic and we can see it easily. And finally, we have our discussion or our conclusions. And again, if you remember our hourglass, this is the bottom of the hourglass, where again, we're summarizing the results, we're connecting it to the real world, and we're talking about it. Um, what's in the discussion? Well, basically, we'll have these elements. Uh, of course, the conclusions, what are the consequences, what are the implications of what was found? It's explaining the results. It's talking about how this uh, new information contributes to the theory or to the science. But it also talks about limitations or problems. When a research study is designed, you do it as best you can, but sometimes some problems come up and you only discover them afterwards. So those are always mentioned in the study. There was a problem with this, there was a problem with that. We thought we would have 100 uh, subjects, but in the end we only had uh, 64 and that's a little small of a sample. Um, again, they go and they connect it to the findings of previous studies. Okay, we knew this, this, and this. What do we know now and how does that help us understand what we knew in the past? It talks about how we can use that information and make some recommendations for its implementation in the real world. Okay, now we know this. How will this help us as human beings? Um, this is a very, very important without application or recommendation, you know, why did we do it? And finally, as we study, we always come up with more questions. So just as the hourglass begins with a question, it also ends with a question with suggestions for future research. Finally, we have our references, and that's all the bibli bibliographic information. Um, these are the texts that are cited in the article, and they can appear either alphabetically or numbered. Different journals do it in different ways. There's not one right way or one wrong way. What's important, however, to remember is that references, the information in the references, always follow a specific order. It always begins with our authors, and then the date of publication, the title of the article, and finally the journal or book information. So we can always identify the or, or order and never be confused. And now that you've finished reading, well, now it's time to think. Yeah, I know. So first of all, consider your own personal reaction to it. What did you think of it? Did you like it? What did you learn about the topic? Was it difficult in some way? And then you have to stop and think a little bit deeper. Is this good research? Are the findings logical? Did the author prove the point? And finally, how can I use this article for my own research? Because ultimately, that's what we do in academia. We read, we learn, and we begin to do our own research. And even if you're not the biggest expert, expert, it's still be critical. Think, is it logical? Did the author make its case? And uh, think about the article. Well, I guess that's it. Now you know a little bit about empirical research and the empirical research article and you're ready to get out there and read some 